All right, I didn't want to have to make this video, and this is, I, I'm saying this specifically because that's the line everyone gives when they're about to make a video that they've been very much wanting to make. They just don't want to seem like a bad guy for it. When they make a video wanting to call someone out, wanting to take down someone or some company or something like that, they're like, oh, I didn't want to have to do this, but I'm going to pull the audience card. And that's not what I'm doing here. For a couple reasons. A, because I've already figured out my situation. I've already gotten myself taken care of. Like, while I'm pointing out something that was done wrong to me, I'm not, there's no retribution to get. And there's no retribution that could be had because of, as of, at the moment, the company no longer seems to exist. So I've had a lot of issues with my website and my web domain and the like lately that caused a lot of problems. Among those problems being that my own business emails, mid email thread of brand deals going on, some really big important brand deals for the channel and the like, and even just some personal communication that I was using that email for, emails just started bouncing back to people out of nowhere. I didn't know, because it doesn't tell me that. And I only found out because I was contacting a company to see about potentially reviewing a keyboard. I said, email adam at ebuiltsbox.com. And they're like, okay. And then they're like, hey, did you get our email? It bounced back to us. Like three days after they sent it, they sent me that on Twitter. I was like, no, I didn't. Thanks for telling me that. I go and check out. And my website had been down for a couple of weeks at this point. I hadn't thought much about it or looked much into it because with this host that I've had, I've had quite a bit of trouble with my website going down off and on, and I just wasn't going to bother with it. I don't use my website for much. My important part is just having my eposvox.com domain and having an email address run through it. All I needed. That is literally all I needed. But then that stopped working. So I went to figure it out, and I was unable to. So rewind a little bit, and we're going to explain what's going on here. So this is a video, basically warning slash just giving words of advice against working with super small shared server hosting for your website or game server. I've worked with two or three of these now, and it's been the exact same situation every single time. I've just never had this bad of an ending before. I won't name the names of the previous companies I've worked with because they've not done anything really wrong. They didn't have the best service, and I wasn't that super satisfied with them, which is why I left, but they never necessarily did anything wrong to me. But the most recent shared server or shared hosting service I worked with, which was NeoSync, has made my life a whole lot of not fun this year. Just for the whole year, pretty much at this point. So if you are unaware, shared server hosting is a process by which companies, all these small little companies, usually ran by like two or three people, get to essentially rent virtual private servers on other people's servers or on like Amazon Cloud servers or on, you know, someone else's server farm. They get to rent server time. And then they get to rent that out to other people to basically make like a scaling, adding more and more middlemen into hosting your website or game server. There's all these empty servers doing nothing that they get to rent and then they get to set it up. And so you're paying, you're, you're paying for something genuine. You're paying for them to set up the cPanel backend for you to set up WordPress or a game server for like Minecraft or Counter-Strike and the like through them. But they're not actually in charge of the servers. They're not in charge of a whole heck of a lot. They route the domain and handle the paperwork and handle some backend things, but it's not their servers. And it ends up not working out super well. But again, it's ran by like two or three people. They often reach out to influencers, YouTube streamer, YouTubers, streamers, podcasters, and the like, and be like, we can give you good discounts since we're paying costs for it anyway. And if you promote our service, use an affiliate code, what have you. That's what I did with the first and second one. And essentially, me just running a basic, what to me was a basic WordPress blog with a few plugins and just trying to basically run a basic site with my videos and some news articles was too much for the server to handle for the shared hosting tier they kept putting me in. Despite the fact that I was like, I, I need these plugins to work, what's the deal? They're like, oh, you're using too much memory. Never ever told me what was going on with that. And then eventually that turned into either my site displaying memory errors. Instead of actually showing the site, it would just display error over memory, blah, 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 or it just go down, just go down randomly. So I dealt with that for a couple of years, was literally like rehauling my site year after year, finally got tired of it, got reached out by the people or reached out to by the people over at NeoSync. Same situation, couple of guys running this service, couple of guys running the service wanted me to basically promote my affiliate link and they'd set me up with a free like month or two of a Minecraft server, which I ran for quite a while. That was the Voxcraft series I ran on this channel for a little while. I eventually ended up paying to host that Minecraft server for a brief amount of time until Minecraft finally died to me and the server was getting quite laggy with only like three or four people on it anyway. Um, 
and I moved my website hosting over to them. My domain, which was my only saving grace in this entire situation I'm building up to, my domain was still bought and filtered, you know, handled by the previous web host. And so I was still paying them for my domain. Although apparently I'm pretty sure I was also paying Neosync for it, even though it was still running through the previous company. So that's a whole different story. But I, I moved my whole website over, rehauled everything again. Again, I'm, I'm sick of revamping my website starting from scratch. Because every time I use these fancy themes that I really, really like, I end up having to like edit every single post and reformat them and all that stuff. And it just got really tedious. So I'd, I did it. I was like, this is the last time I'm going to do this. We're good to go. It was great for the first six months to a year. It was really great. They never ran into the same plug-in memory issues that I had on previous hosts. It seemed fairly reliable and it seemed a little bit quicker, especially once I integrated Amazon web hosting or Amazon web services for caching or caching my images that I was uploading. Worked fantastic. I was really happy with it. Never made a single affiliate sale. That's on me, but I had the link in every video description, which I'll get to in a minute. And I promoted the server and stuff, but people don't want small name web hosts when it seems fairly shady and I apparently shouldn't have gone for it myself. But it worked great. And then over the past year and year and a half, it's had just random bits of downtime. And it's and they've had some blacklist blacklisting issues where I myself stopped being able to connect to it. I couldn't even go to my own website. Other people would load it. I'd like send the link to people. I'd be like, does this work for you or is it down? They're like, yeah, it works fine. What are you talking about? Every time I'd load it, oh, DNS couldn't do it, whatever. Every single computer on my network, it was an IP based thing, not like a host issue or my own specific DNS issue. They had to add me to, white, to a whitelist a million different times, even though my public IP rarely ever changed, which was a mistake on my part in general, but still. Um, and it just never kept working. And then eventually the FTP server just literally would not let me connect. Now, when I first started working with them, their support was fantastic. They had an active Twitter account where they were sharing status updates, letting me know and letting everyone know, uh, maintenance downtime. They had a Skype account that was supposed to be for sales only for them to like talk to people for sales, but they'd always contact me about my support tickets on there. They had a support ticket system where they responded to me like immediately, like they wanted to make sure they could help me out. By the time of the end of my service, I had so many open tickets that either just disappeared or they stopped responding to. I was literally calling them out on that in the support ticket system. I was like, all right, I've already submitted three tickets on this. I have the number in my email where it said support ticket number, blah, 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 blah. But they have disappeared from even my closed tickets on my account. What the hell, man? And then they passed me up to some other higher up and they're like, oh, sorry about that. We'll get this fixed and never got it fixed. Then I started getting billed for services that I canceled. That's when I started to get really, really pissed with them. I ran, uh, originally it was just epostfox.com, but then I started up a couple side projects to see if I could take them anywhere, and it didn't end up happening. But I had an indie game site, a Pokemon site, and even a site for a podcast I was running. All through them. All, yeah, all through them. Paying them a lot for web hosting services. Those sites worked okay, but whenever I had the issue of not being able to connect to the back end of my website, it affected those sites too. And uh, eventually I just wasn't even able to work on the website, and it just wasn't worth it, so I just canceled. I was just like, all right, I'm done. Let the domain expire. I am done. Well, when you let domains expire with them, their billing service has an automated email system that emails you like every couple days to let you know, hey, your domain's expiring. Hey, your domain's expiring. Hey, your domain is expiring. It's still emailing me to this day, even though I can't respond to that email address. So when I got charged for it again and I got the invoice and it's like, you're charged for this website. I was like, hey, what's up? I canceled this. What's going on? They're like, oh, sorry. You need to cancel through your PayPal automated payments confirmation, something that took me a very long time to find, mind you, and it still takes me a little bit of time to find sometimes if I'm not remembering correctly. They're like, I need to cancel it through PayPal or otherwise they're going to keep charging me because that's how it works. It's not how it's worked for any other subscription I've ever had. Every subscription I've had, if you cancel on their website, they're no longer charging you. That's how it's supposed to work. But no, apparently I need to tell PayPal to just stop paying them or they're just going to take, take money forever like Trump's campaign. I don't know. So I was like, okay, fine, whatever. I did it. Please don't charge me anymore. They didn't give me a refund. They gave me site credit. I was okay with that at first because I still had my hosting and stuff through there and I'd just take it out of there. Got charged again for the other website that I had canceled. I thought I had cleared out all the PayPal ones and just left the one for my website. There was only one left. And as far as I could tell, it wasn't associated with those websites. Still got charged again. Took out all the site credit and took money out of my PayPal. And I'd been charged a couple other times that I couldn't figure out exactly what for. I contacted support. This is now the end of July. I was like, hey, what's going on? I got charged for this. And I 
was pretty sure I canceled on PayPal. Everything's expired on your end. Why am I being charged for services I'm not getting? No response. Now, apparently starting at like mid-July, my website had been down and never came back up. I didn't notice because I wasn't working on it. I was just using my email. I hadn't focused on my website. I didn't feel like dealing with it. Come the start of August, get that email or Twitter message that, hey, my email's bouncing back and site never came back up. Fast forward to early to mid-August, I go to contact them to figure out what the hell's going on. Neosync's website doesn't exist. No, neosync.net. Nothing. Even the cache aid version, or cached, everyone must correct me on that, the cached. The cached versions of their website and my website are basically just destroyed. And if you search for Neosync, even Neosync web hosting, they no longer come up. I have literally to this day, uh, this, this problem started at the end of the July, it's now about to be the start of September, probably mid-September when you're watching this. I have to this day yet to be able to get a hold of anyone at that damn company. Email? All of their own emails bounce back because their own domains are shut down and not you know not re not responsive. Even though I'm still getting automatic notifications from billing at neosync.net still telling me that my domains are expired and make me want to rip my hair out, I can't respond to those emails. It bounces back. I can't send an email to support at neosync. It bounces back. Their own website is their existence doesn't seem to exist. Skype? I can't get a reply from them or there either, and as far as I can tell, they haven't been online on Skype in like six months. What the hell do I do? No support ticket? No Skype? I went to check for their Twitter account. Their Twitter account stopped posting like towards the end of 2015. They have disappeared. They ran away. Now, th this would have been easier to recover from had my domain DNS for my email not gone down because I have multiple huge ongoing brand deals at the moment that I've been super stoked to share with you guys and talk about and I can't yet that I've been working really hard on that literally my email for and even just normal review requests and normal correspondence with contacts literally mid-thread all got shut down no way of really doing anything about it because that email bounced back and then I had I had to be the one who looked super unprofessional and ridiculous responding from my gmail to a thread that that gmail was never looped into to be like hey guys my email is not working. Please send emails to the Gmail account. Please believe it's the real me. Hey, thanks. Bye. Embarrassing as hell, honestly. But it wasn't even my freaking fault. Most people have been sympathetic and most people didn't even notice that I responded from a different account and they're just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Uh, but incredibly, incredibly frustrating. To this day, I've not heard anything back from them. So as soon as I realized, so rewind a little bit, as soon as I realized that the email wasn't working, I was like, okay, I'm done. I can't reach this company for shit. I am done. I went to GoDaddy's website, pulled up the automatic, and this is not sponsored by any stretch of the imagination, but I went to GoDaddy's website because I heard a bajillion commercials for them, I've heard people recommend them, heard other people who were sponsored by them, pulled up their little text chat and I was like, please, please God, can you help me? I need my domain and my email set up immediately. Now, they couldn't do it immediately because domain DNS redirecting or whatever takes seven days. So that was an additional week of downtime on that email. Literally. It's, uh, I've estimated based on how much I get per week, it could have been as much as like 200 emails. Most of them not super important, but 200 emails that I missed over the course of like three weeks that my email was gone. I'll, and most, a lot of those are one way review request contacts that I'm never gonna hear back from. Really frustrating. And apparently a couple of them were review request samples that I have and I need to send back them checking in on my progress and then them just now responding again, being really annoyed that I haven't checked in with them because I never got their email. But anyway, contacted GoDaddy, got them to talk to me and set me up, and they were able to set me up. They set me up with, they basically, my, my domain was renewed through, which I found out as I was working with them, my domain itself was registered through my previous host. Had my domain been registered with Neosync, it would have probably been literally impossible for me to get it back because I have to have some sort of access to their back end in order to get an approval code, code to transfer my domain. If I don't have any access to that, that domain is gone. Thankfully, it was through a previous host. So they got me set up, and they got me set up with a basic WordPress account, as I had before. Hosting, added a couple years on with email and the domain, transferred ownership of the domain to them, and set me up with some basic hosting. This cost me like 300 fucking dollars. Now it's for three years. I was paying like every six months, and that was really frustrating and stuff like that. Like I am set up, everything's gonna be rock solid for three, maybe four years. I don't remember exactly. I am good. It is, it's actually a really good situation. They wanted to set me up with a 10 year plan, but I was like, I don't got that kind of money. Um, but it cost me a lot of fucking money. 
to get this set up. A lot. A lot. For money that I had no business needing to pay because my site should have fucking worked in the first place. Pardon my French. So I do all this. It still takes an additional seven days to get my email back online. Go get it set up, get the aliases set up, because I have a few aliases on top of the email that I use to put in various places. And the emails finally start pouring in, along with some emails of people being like, where the hell have you been? Everything's fine and dandy, right? Well, almost. Another problem being that Neosync promised they have 24-hour nightly backups of all my content. So anytime I want access to the content or need to restore it, they have copies. I'm good to go. Those archives usually take up a lot of space and off of their crappy FTP servers take a really long time to download. So the last archive that I have saved locally, which I do realize some of this responsibility is on me, but the promise of me paying like a couple extra bucks added on to each subscription period for that backup kind of really makes me feel like crap. But yes, it was some up on me, but the last local backup I have was from 2014. So at all trying to rebuild the site from that backup would have been effectively useless because nothing about that site in 2014 is how I want it in 2016. So on top of everything, every piece of content, which has tons of backlinks scattered across the web, Google search is still pouring in for. I still, on my little WordPress uh, dashboard, it still shows me like which searches are hitting my website. So many searches that were hitting tutorials now hitting 404 pages on my website, which is no longer monetized no longer has those posts and no longer will have those posts for quite a long time until I can rebuild my tutorial base if I ever get around to it. At the moment, I've completely disabled the blog portion because I just don't have the time, motivation, nor heart to sit there and rebuild the blog again. So at the moment, it's a basic about page. It's got my FAQ page with my What the Fact series. It's got a, a, a quote page for me to sign people up for my YouTube consultations. And then it's got a basic contact page. And that's it. And it's using a basic WordPress theme instead of the multiple themes I paid 50 or more dollars for at various points in time. I do have those back up and I can re-download those from the sites I bought them from. But that's not the point. The point is, this cost me a metric shit ton of extra money, a lot of extra time and energy during one of the peak periods of busyness in my work season. All because this site already was a pretty shitty service and then just up and disappeared. One last bit of resolution. I did reach out to PayPal. I am filing disputes, or I believe they're called chargebacks, on my last two charges with that company, which were already four services I never had in the first place since they were for canceled services. So I'm still fully justified in that. I'm not doing that just to be spiteful. And they have till mid-September to respond. This may be after you're watching this, because I do want to make sure things are sorted out. But it has now been an entire month of them not existing. And given that the, the PayPal dispute specifically said it was going to billing at neosync.net, and I know for a fact that those emails probably bounced right back to PayPal. They're not hearing back, or they're not getting back, so I'm probably getting my chargebacks, hopefully. If their PayPal account even exists at this point. And to those of you who want to jump to their offense and be like, maybe they got Poodle Corp, maybe they got DDoSed, maybe they got taken down. I highly doubt there is some way that they got taken down to the, ex to the extent that they could not communicate via their Twitter account or their Skype account. They have my contact information somewhere. They could have reached out to me or their customers or what have you. They could have posted to Twitter, which they haven't done in like a year. They could have messaged on Skype, which they haven't done in about a year. So they, they have methods of communicating still. They did not use them. They have literally disappeared, ran away with my content, ran away with my site, could have ran away with my entire domain, which have really just fucked me over, and ran away with a little bit of my money. Unfortunately, the amount of money that I'm disputing on PayPal is less than $100. So not at all the money I'm making back. But... I have to try to get what little back I can. So this has been a little bit of word of advice and just a very angry rant. I've been desperately wanting to get off my chest after I made sure that they really weren't coming back. About a word of caution and advice against working with small shared hosting sites for your hosting your web server or game server. It's not worth it. Pay a little bit extra money. Go for a big company that's been around for a long time and it's probably going to be around for a much longer amount of time. And they have much better support. Their phone support is amazing. Their email support has been pretty good. Again, not sponsored by GoDaddy. I don't have an affiliate link. I don't even want you to go check them out unless you really want to. I won't even put a link down there. I just needed to say this and update you guys as to what the hell has gone on with my website and my domain and why none of the pages work anymore. Because I also have video links in every single video or website links in like half of my older video descriptions, which are all going to point to 404 pages. And yeah, so that's great. 
and I also had to go through and remove all my various NeoSync affiliate links that I used to have in all my video descriptions as well. That part was fun. So, hope you enjoyed this video for some sick sadistic reason. Smash the like button if you did, and subscribe for more tech videos. Come check out my newly revamped and very mundane looking now website, and I'll catch you in the next video. It's done! Or at least, in all likelihood, by the time you're watching this, it will be mostly noticeably done. The website, eposfox.com, has been down for the past, like, month or so. It's been down since, like, December. And this handle is not stabilizing me. There we go. It's been down pretty much since December. And I, I've had a lot of trouble with my website. And True keeps asking me if it's worth it because... Pretty much every time it goes down, it takes like at least a day straight, just non-stop working to get it back up and running. I keep having issues where my website uses too much RAM for my hosts to support it. And my previous hosts, like it, the website just was down all the time. So I switched to NeoSync, but I'm still every now and then pulling too much RAM that it's giving them like 50 million emails and things like that. 